the Joe Rogan experience. Did you ever see that uh, that Tom <laughs> Cruise movie about Barry Seal? Yes. It's all about that. It's all yeah. about a few cowboys, rogue CIA agents that decide to try My to make a little bit of money. My buddy Caleb is in that movie for like five minutes, and he steals the whole fucking thing. Well, who he is plays, he? He plays his... Uh, his wife's younger brother. Oh yeah, the like the like the, the degenerate dipshit. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he was awesome. He's a great. He's a funny dude. That's a lot like the bluegrass conspiracy. You know about that? What's what's that? The bluegrass. There was basically it was a Lexington, Kentucky police officer. Oh man, it went it's all a, the way up to like the governor's office. And yeah, shit, and it man. was it was deep in Kentucky politics for years and years and years, and he uh, he was he was flying a plane, a little prop plane with weed and and like money millions of dollars in cocaine he crashed in knoxville tennessee and they found everything they didn't know he was a police officer until he died and he was like he he, he jumps out of the plane with a parachute with the coke strapped to him and the yeah. weight the fuck the shoot up gucci loafers they and found him like on the ground with his chute half open and just like yeah like a powder coke puck. yeah and oh. a bear also ate all the cocaine and died, and right? Died from, <laughs> like yeah, a big strawberry sword. shortcake just laying there in a horse farm field, you know? Like. Yeah, there's pictures of all, well, not all of that. But, uh, you know. How much coke does it take to kill a bear? It, it says how much he ate. I don't know off the top of my head, but oh. poor thing. I think they have it stuffed in uh, Lexington. I think they have Listen, it's a really bear. good book. You should read that book, Bluegrass Conspiracy, because yeah. one, it's a true story, but it small state level corruption at the utmost level in there terms of drugs. Pablo Escobar. <laughs> Pablo, Escobar. <laughs> Pablo Escobar. The story of the legendary yeah. cocaine bear of Kentucky. That's at, Wow. Uh, Is that the bear they mounted him? Wow. Yeah, that's that's a, it's fucking, it's like, he's got a fucking sign around his neck that says cocaine bear. I think that's yeah, a, like a company. <laughs> I love Kentucky. Kentucky that's for the Kentucky. Kentucky. That's, that's, what it is. that's like a gold chain. It's like he's a rapper. Look, he's got his hat sideways and he's got a fucking sign around his neck that says yeah. cocaine bear. It's all gold. Yeah. <laughs> Bluegrass. Bluegrass, baby. I got to read into that. I definitely had heard about the bear eating the Coke. Yeah. The Barry Seals one is a terrible one because the reason why they found out about it is because these two kids found the uh, Coke drop. They found the Coke and they wound up murdering these two kids when they went to retrieve mm. the Coke and they put their bodies on the railroad tracks. And they told uh, the parents that the kids got high and fell asleep on the, wa- the railroad tracks. But the parents did an independent autopsy and they found stab wounds in the kids. You know what's really fucked up also? What would give that away? I've seen that when like transients or bums get yeah. come in on, you know, it's always. I, Part of our, we would have to find like young kids and shit playing hop car and you know doing the gutter rat lifestyle and the thousand dollar fucking North Face parkas and shit. He's like, yeah. what are you doing, man? You're gonna die, right? Um, but like bums would come in on the trains, and this didn't happen on our yard. It was over the North Yard. This guy, he thought they were done with the movement. You know, you took fifty seven hundred foot steel with fucking forty five thousand horsepower on the front of it. Like when it starts moving, it's very sudden. And hard. So if you yeah. just go to stand up all that thing, all of a sudden, when it starts rolling, and then you, you lose your footing, and you fall down the tracks between the cars. But when you get run over by a train, it's not bloody and messy. Because the especially if it's been on the main line, it's rolling really hard and hot. You put a limb on a track or a body or a corpse, all that weight and friction and heat, when it goes over, it just cuts it like butter and carterizes everything, like pinches you off like sausage. So we find pieces, Ooh. not a mess, just pieces. <laughs> oh my god! Unless you hit a fucking cow or something standing in the middle of the track and you're going 70 miles an hour, and then it's just asshole and guts hanging off the front of the train. And Does that even like, slow the train down? No, no, First not at all. Seen. A cow doesn't slow <laughs> the like, train it's, down. It's less than a bug on your windshield. Whoa! Yeah. Could you imagine hit a cow. being in the fucking seat? The Driver's yeah, seat. I've done it. Have you? You've actually seen <laughs> yeah, a cow? I've operated locomotives. I've never hit a cow, but I've definitely driven a train. Right, but what did? You, what was the biggest thing you hit? I didn't really hit anything. Nothing. No. Oh, I mean, imagine though being. We in were switching. I only cows. operated one within the yard, so I probably like 35, 40 miles an hour tops. But on the main line, when they're really rolling, they're doing like 70, 72 miles an hour. Like I said, it's fifty. You know, a mile and a half long train. With five, four or five locomotives on the front of it, all with 30,000 horsepower each. So, I mean, you're just a bag of fucking blood, man. You're not even going to. But it just like. 
Do they have special fronts that are designed to hit things like that? Yeah, it's a big, giant steel plow. It's designed to push 10 feet of fucking snow out of the way if it has to. Whoa. Yeah. So, like, essentially, like, those things that semis used for deer when they, the middle of the night, those, mm-hmm. those uh, giant But it, it's actually a things. big steel shovel with, like, an axe wedge in it. Whoa. And it just kind of it just hangs, and it sits about six inches off the rail itself. And its whole idea is to just splatter just everything. Just push anything out of the way and destroy it Whew. so to keep the train from derailing. Because the only thing holding those things on the rail, the inner flange of a, of a, a wheel set, you know, it's there's like a little three-quarter inch lip that kind of hangs over on the inside of the rails. Yeah. So it's all just gravity and downforce keeping that thing going so you could put like a brick technically you could take anything a piece of fucking metal or a a car jack and just lay it on that thing when that train hits it at 70 miles an hour it's coming off the rail and everything behind it is still going 70 miles an hour stacking up behind it and uh i mean you got you don't think about every time you pull up to a crossing in the city and you see a train go by 10 miles an hour and there's like 20 tankers on there full of raw chlorine you could really fuck some shit up if you knew what you were doing, you know. You'd kill a whole city, you derail that train. We have to, so we'd have to think about that and like homeland security would come out and we'd have to have courses and shit and But you have so many miles of track. Oh yeah. How do you make sure that nobody does anything? There are crews that drive that track on oh a daily basis and, and repair things and Dude. You freak me out. Fuck trains. That's why I quit the right? job. It freaked, yeah. I watched enough of those things happen right in front of me, and it was my job to clean them up and get a crane out there. I had a fucking cot in my office. I would live at the yard for three or four days until we got everything repaired and back together and rolling. But, like, you know, two or three times where you'd be sitting out there in the middle of the switching leads, this happened where I'd be in a pickup truck at night or during the daytime, like, with one of the guys I work with. You know, maybe it's a guy, you're tired, you're trying to get done early, and you got a bunch of empty cars on the back, and the dude puts the throttle down before the air goes through the system all the way to the rear of the train. So, you know, you got this dead weight, and he thinks, oh, fuck it, I got three locomotives, I can push it, it'll be okay. Until the when they designed the system 100-plus years ago, nothing has changed since then. It's a very <clears throat> primitive, functional air brake system design. You hook all these hoses up from the front to the back, it runs air through which allows the brakes to release. So then the engineer can control those brakes. Well, if the air doesn't go all the way to the back, the brakes are still on those cars. So when all this horsepower pushing rolling metal hits metal that w- does not want to roll, it just buckles up in a TP almost instantaneously, goes off, and you won't even feel it if you're 30 cars up that you're pushing shit into the dirt, and it's all just piling on top of, it, of itself and, like, I went like two seconds. I watched this train go from being on the track to literally digging out a 10 foot trough of earth and just displacing it. And I think like every day me or one of my guys is standing right there. I was like, I'm going to go write songs. (laughs) Dude. Good thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Very good thinking. It's a good job, but it should have killed somewhere. Someone is on a fucking train. Listening uh-huh. to this, <laughs> right? Freaking out, <laughs> freaking <laughs> out. They're just about to go to sleep. I'll just listen to Sturgill Simpson. They should Joe just Rogan. go write songs, brother. <laughs> yeah, right on. <Oof. laughs>